YouTubers. This is Amy and Ben here to chat again. Today we're talking a trailer. This is a very exciting, interesting, potentially risky trailer. Yep. Robert the Bruce. Yep. So lead on from Braveheart. Braveheart 2. So we just watched a trailer and we'll give you our, um, our reaction in a second. Mm-hmm. Just for everyone, um, so if you haven't checked out the trailer, go over, check it out, come back, because I'm going to be talking about it now. Spoiler alert for Braveheart, potentially. Potentially. Um, so, the premise of this one is it follows directly on from the end of Braveheart, and we're, we're focused on Robert the Bruce. So, he's had a couple of military uh, military losses, his armies is in tatters, and now the English are hunting him. They've put a bounty on him. I think it's... 50 gold pieces oh, to try and even turn the, um, his own people against him because that's a lot of money back then. Mm-hmm. So we follow him as he goes through um, the transition of being a hunted man to trying to rally his countrymen again behind him to oppose, mm-hmm. you know, at that stage, one of the, the greatest empires in the world, the British Empire. So this is a really, um, again, harkening back to the original Braveheart, a David versus Goliath battle. Yeah, epic, yeah. Celtic. Yeah. So what did you think, Amy? We just saw it. What did you think? I'm again on the fence with this one. Yeah. It's not hashtag excitement. Well, it's so hashtag nervous. I think I, yeah, I think I have to preface my thoughts on this sure. with, um, a story about me as a little kid. Crikey. Get comfortable, everyone. <laughs> Condensing it into a one minute version. Okay. I was a huge Braveheart fan as a child mm-hmm. growing up. And being part of that era before the internet, I watched Braveheart probably about 30 plus times. Oh, did you have it on VHS? Yeah. And William Wallace, AKA Mel Gibson was probably one of my first crushes. Okay. Um, And at the same time, I wanted to be him. So (laughs) (laughs) I wanted to have sex with myself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, (laughs) But I feel as if this is almost like, crazy nostalgia for that and i love that aspect of it well that's going to be a big part of it because um when i have a look at the information that we know about the film Mm -hmm. so we've got the original um robert the bruce yeah that's so he's he's carrying on uh, carrying through um but we've got a director so everyone else associated with the filming is not a big star um Mm. so the director is a guy called richard gray um aussie aussie done a couple of minor films um Anna Hutchinson, I believe it was she, Mel Gibson's wife in what? the original. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not too sure. But there's no real big names about it. So what they're really going to be relying on, I believe here, is that you watched and remembered and loved Braveheart mm-hmm. and you want to see the, the essentially the sequel or the follow-on to yeah. it. So I think that's the big play there. Yeah, and it's funny because it. I was thinking about the idea of um, mm-hmm. Braveheart in the time that it existed where you do watch a movie 30 times, whereas yep. now um, I don't, I haven't really felt that same way about any movie since the internet really took off because sure. you've got things like Netflix, you're able to download pirated, unsolicited versions of it. That um, we don't do. That we don't. We've heard people do. Yeah, yeah, supposedly. Um, and you're able to pretty much have the plethora of things at your fingertips for watching. So you never really watch unless you're absolutely obsessed with it, a movie more than once, certainly not 30 plus times. And I'm not exaggerating. (laughs) Yeah. Well, look, I, I I do watch um, shows and films uh, multiple times, but, um, (laughs) Uh, you know, we jokingly, jokingly say that sometimes I watch a, for, um, a show once for enjoyment and then the next for analysis. Yeah. Um, so I do that, but I definitely um, will say that what we don't experience a lot of now is that cinematic experience of it. So, mm-hmm. and I think that kind of is what you're talking about as well, the, the nostalgia. So there's kind of two things. One, where um, you'd go to the cinema as a kid uh, and that was pretty much the one of the only ways that you watched um, films, not on your iPad or laptop Mm -hmm. um, or your phone or your phone. And the other part is, um, is that if you did watch them at home, it would be on VHS. So it would either be 
you bought the VHS or you went up to Blockbuster or yeah. Civic Video or something or crazy you like taped that. It or you tape when it finally came on TV yeah. on Sunday night. And you'd have to fast forward the ads. But what I mean is it's not as um, now movies are so readily, readily accessible mm. um, that the ex- don't get me wrong, I love that, but you don't have the necessary experience and the excitement because it's a rare treat that we used to have when we we're growing up. Yeah, that's a really good point. And I think building on that same point, this particular movie looks like it's going to be risky for a feeling that we don't really get it's not just a nostalgia of playing on uh Braveheart's um feeling on the set and everything it literally looks like um whenever not Braveheart came out in the 90s 95 yeah 95 it literally looks like this sequel was brought out in 1996 i can hear the same epic music score Mm -hmm. it's the same guy playing robert the bruce he has not aged no he really it's It's amazing bloody timeless that guy and there's a scene in it Mm. um where if i think of back to braveheart uh, Robert the Bruce only had a reasonably small yep. um, part in in there, but yep. William Wallace is kind of like his guiding light yeah. in uh, Braveheart in that Robert the Bruce betrays uh, William Wallace's side when he's fighting for freedom. And then there's a few scenes where Robert the Bruce is dealing with the fallout from that in mm-hmm. terms of his conscience being... Yep. Um, Plagued, by, yeah, plagued by, by, the, the, yeah, by the betrayal, by the betrayal of the Scottish, and I think with um, the scene, uh, basically William Wallace comes in on a horse in like Robert the Bruce's bedroom, and Robert the Bruce wakes up, and you never really know whether it was just a nightmare or whether this larger than life William Wallace was actually in his room, standing over him, ready to gore him with the horse's hooves, and that scene looks like it's been put in again or something where people the characters are actually Mm. in the bedroom again in this movie and what that is is potentially a hugely risky idea of looking like they've spliced actual footage from the original Braveheart and sticking too close to the original product and making it seem like it's a potential fan trailer we want something if we're going to have a sequel to something we want it to be as good as the original and bring something new to what the original had brought us and made us feel something similar but in a different context rather than being in a same not quite so epic context and that's yeah. my fear with this one well I, it's, it's funny because i view that part i'm like it appears that whoever maybe the director of photography has just used um, the sim- uh, the similar type of setup and scene, but that mm. just that might just be calling back to how accurate yeah. Braveheart's um, depiction was. Yeah, and it was highly accurate that they've tried to do something similar. Mm. Uh, but I think it's an interesting point when you said like um, that there is a, a, a scene that it looks like it's almost shot in the exact same room. So mm. th- th- that would be quite quite interesting to see how um, the film look and feels. Um, from that scenic perspective and uh, photographic perspective throughout. That's it. And I think the speculation, um, this is going out a bit of a speculation. I know, I know. Um, But the fact that the director is an Aussie who hasn't really got too, too many big things to his name makes me think that part of the reason he might be doing this production is because he was a fan of Braveheart. And I know that's a bit of a speculation, but I'd be interested to know whether he's watched it 30 plus times. Is there anyone who isn't a fan of Braveheart? That is true, but I just, I don't know how to explain my extreme love for William Wallace. (laughs) So look, on William Wallace, I I think an interesting um, Mm. point is going to be, how does Braveheart, on Braveheart 2, Robert the Bruce, he stand up without Mel Gibson? So Mm. Mel Gibson starred in the last one he was um a producer but he was also the director yeah so and and he's a big personality with a big on-screen presence so i think it'll be interesting to see how this film holds Mm. up without that you know that main leading actor um to kind of pull it all together and carry forward um the film so look again not to say that that it won't be good but i think that's a big difference between the original braveheart and this sequel yeah say what you will about mel gibson and his anti-semitism and his drunken ramblings and his huge family populated yeah, the yeah. Earth. Uh, but he has a passion for movies yeah, look he, the he, passion of the crime <laughs> he, he's a crazy but he's a great actor yeah but yeah. i think it's even more than that that he's got this um, uh, 
transcendence into that director role because he it's almost like he understood William's soul. So I'm wondering whether this guy's going to understand Robert's soul. He was fantastic in Braveheart. Well, I, I think what what, what uh, um, I don't remember the exact details of, but I know that there was um, challenges around the historical accuracy of it. Mm-hmm. So what I'd say is. Um, he knew how to tell the story of his version of William yes. Wallace, but he was very clear on what that looked and felt like. True. So I think um, here again, we don't necessarily want um, just a historical visual representation of mm-hmm. what happened. We want someone who knows the story that they want to tell and has a very good understanding of what that looks and feels like. Yeah, so maybe not having the confidence to um, portray that type of movie is going to be an interesting absolutely um, hurdle for this one to get over but who knows i mean I'm, I'm happy to watch it i'm just not happy to watch something where the original i could have spent my time watching the original yeah for me i think the only thing that the um so i'm i'm really excited if i kind of wrap it all up uh, i'm excited to see it but i am nervous by the fact that there is not a big name attached to this in either the um, casting mm. or in the uh, directorship of the of the film. Yes. So that's the only and thing I'll, that's worrying me. I'll raise you that nervous oh. Oh. Um, and say I am apprehensive oh. about how close it is to the original in all the ways that it needn't be. We can watch the original for um, getting that epic score and feeling that, um, uh, I don't know, that Scottish Celticness, mm-hmm. that same... Uh, filtered wash that they put on the movie yeah. but I want something different this time around and if they can't take out that confidence of Mel Gibson and replace it with something equally as charismatic then I'm not going to be interested in this movie and I can feel myself yawning well that, well, that, that kind of does um, raise an interesting side point that I'll just touch on mm-hmm. is that we have um, cited this before and I think a lot of people are doing it at the moment as well is is Hollywood getting to the point where Mm. they are either out of good ideas or they're not willing to back new ideas and they're just kind of going back to things that have worked before in the past and either rebooting them, reshooting them um, as live action versus cartoon or just essentially trying to franchise them because they knew that that formula worked. And so they're trying to change as little as possible. If that's the case and it's just sheer laziness, I will be voting with my money and not going to see this in the cinemas. But let us know what you guys think. Are you excited about the idea of Braveheart 2, which is what this has kind of been coined? Yep. Or are you thinking that Robert the Bruce is going to be a new movie all on its own? Or is it going to be something that you could have just watched the original VHS and fast forwarded through the ads for? (laughs) Let us know in the comments. Hit like, hit subscribe, and we will see you next time. Freedom!